Good morning, Western Washington, and happy Thursday. I'm Matthew Fab with Western Washington Weather, and we've got a lot to talk about today as we have smoke continuing across some portions of Western Washington, and we have our summer atmospheric river and frontal system moving in here in the next couple of days, Friday through Saturday here. So let's start with the satellite imagery. You can see we got this marine layer just perfectly aligned with the crest of the Cascades this morning. Some clear areas in there, and this will likely clear out as we go throughout the day. A little bit of smoke mixing in here across parts of northwest Washington and then some of that smoke from the Bear Gulch fire moving across eastern Washington a little bit. We have some clouds offshore moving in ahead of our system as well. So let's continue here with the Bear Gulch fire. This is where we're going to start off. This thing grew dramatically over the last couple of days now at 8,257 acres this is just a huge fire for the Olympic Mountains and really for Western Washington at large. And you can see all these heat signatures as it has really pushed westward here into the Olympic Mountains over the last couple of days. And this is just, it's very uh, kind of sobering to see such a huge fire in the Olympic Mountains. And it will continue to grow here as we go through the day today. And I expect that acreage will increase a bit given how active it was yesterday and today although we will hopefully see this start to calm down with the rain coming in. Taking a look here at smoke on the high resolution rapid refresh high resolution model. So here you can see as we start at 9 a.m., we do have some vertically integrated smoke that's smoke aloft across parts of Western Washington and British Columbia. As we go through the day today, this pushes out, but the fires start to release some new smoke plumes. As we go to 2 p.m. here, you can see a new smoke plume off the Bear Gulch fire. And then a new smoke plume off the Mount Underwood fire, which is still holding at about 5,500 acres in British Columbia there near the city of Port Alberni. Now, as we go through this afternoon, take a look at that pretty big smoke plume off the Bear Gulch fire blowing just northeast this time with the winds coming more onshore out of the southwest, blowing that smoke plume north of Seattle and straight toward Everett and parts of southern would be island, and then you got the smoke plume off the Mount Armstrong fire blowing north up into British Columbia. As we go throughout the evening, that smoke will push up north through the night, and then we will wake up to mostly clear skies smoke-wise as we go into Friday. It will be mostly cloudy, though. You can see a little bit of smoke coming off Bear Gulch on Friday, much more smoke coming off Mount Underwood on Friday, but even that is not going to be all that much. So both these fires will start to diminish dramatically as that rain moves in, and that will really, we'll really have to watch then for the updates after the fires in terms of how much it calms them down. Taking a look at near surface smoke, we do have a little bit of surface smoke around parts of the area this morning that will likely start to clear out through the day today, but then take a look around 3 p.m. here with that smoke from the Bear Gulch fire blowing northeast here toward parts of Northwest Washington, really from Snohomish County northward, you are going to get some noticeable surface smoke as we go through the evening, especially in some of the foothills here, but all the way down to places like Bellingham and Mount Vernon as well. So we'll likely have some air quality in the moderate to maybe the unhealthy category. And then as we go throughout the evening, that smoke will diminish and we may get a little bit of surface smoke as we go through uh, tomorrow, but not very much for most of the area. Now taking a look at our overall pattern, we have the troughing that is starting to build into the area. And then as we go through Friday evening, you can see with the troughing just to our northwest, we have the atmospheric river that will ride up along the south side of that trough. And then the troughing just kind of hangs out. It's going to linger there for a few days, maybe bringing some more showers in, but not very much. It doesn't really look like that's going to happen. It's just going to keep us a little bit on the cooler side. And then we may have a little bit of ridging starting to build back in as we go into the midweek part of next week. Taking a look at precipitation type here, as we go into Thursday evening, this is when tonight the rain starts to move in. This is 8 p.m., and you can see you get some of that rain right off the coast there and moving into the Olympic Peninsula in Vancouver Island and parts of northwest Washington. And then as we go to about 11 p.m. to midnight, that rain starts to spread across the whole region. We get a little bit of a lull as we go into Friday morning, but then as we go into midday into the Friday afternoon there, you can see that heavy rain on Vancouver Island pushing south into western Washington overnight Friday into Saturday morning, and that is the core of the atmospheric river. And then those showers continue all the way into Saturday evening there, and maybe even having some continue into Saturday uh, night into early Sunday morning before we do dry out and diminish as the atmospheric river moves away. 
Now, taking a look here, this is the European model on the left, the GFS model on the right, both looking at precipitable water. That's the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. And I just want to show the model agreement we have here on this atmospheric river. You can see both forecasts show as we go into Friday, that plume of moisture moving right into the northwest. And then as we go into Friday evening, look at this great agreement between the European and the GFS in that enhanced area of moisture pushing straight into western Washington, British Columbia, and western Oregon, hanging out through Friday night into Saturday morning, and then pushing out of the area. So this is just, this is really something we usually see in fall. So it's pretty crazy to see it happening in summer. This is the University of Washington's WRF GFS model. And it is also showing that strong plume of moisture there. We have Washington here, then Oregon and California. British Columbia is up here. And you can see that plume of moisture slamming into parts of western Washington there as this this is Friday evening. So there's very good model agreement that this is going to happen. So now in terms of just want to point this out, this is precipitable water anomaly. So basically what percentage of the normal amount of moisture in the atmosphere we're getting with this atmospheric river moving in and take a look at these numbers as we go into Friday here. As we go into Friday afternoon and evening, you're looking at 200% of normal in terms of precipitable water content over Western Washington, uh, the coast getting up to like 250% of normal. So basically the bottom line here is it's going to be much, much wetter than normal. And you will notice that in the dew points as well. As we take a look at this, Friday at 6 p.m. there, look at some of these dew points, 63, 65 degrees across parts of the area. It's going to be pretty muggy at times as we go into Friday and then maybe remaining so at times on Saturday with some of that moisture around. Now taking a look at total precipitation, this is the national blend of models. The National Weather Service runs this and kind of takes all these forecast models and gives them this blend and then gives out that as a forecast. So on the coast, you can see Long Beach Peninsula getting about one and a half inches up north toward Grays Harbor, Westport, Hoquiam, and Aberdeen. You're getting up toward two to two and a half inches. And then as you continue north up the coast, up toward the very wet northern coast, you can potentially getting near four inches of rain with this atmospheric river. The, is it just aligned really well with the Olympic Mountains? You can see that Olympic Peninsula rain shadow there, Port Angeles getting just under three quarters of an inch, Squim area getting at only about a quarter inch of rainfall with this system, maybe about toward a half inch. But then you can see over toward Whidbey Island in the San Juans getting three quarters of an inch to one and a half inches as you go further north. Bellingham getting one and a half inches. And the same thing as you go down towards Snohomish County. Seattle at about an inch. Tacoma at about an inch and a quarter. And same thing there along the Kitsap Peninsula. Bear Gulch Fire getting up to two inches of rain. And then areas from Olympia down to Portland getting three quarters of an inch to one and a quarter inches. So overall, very nice round of rain. And I actually forgot to mention this too. The Cascades are going to get two to four inches of rain out of this, maybe even a little bit more in some spots. So hopefully should put out some fires that are, have been smoldering in there, especially in the North Cascades. Although I wouldn't be surprised to also potentially see some flash flood watches issued for some burn scar areas. Comparing this to the European model, it's a very similar trend. The European is just a little bit lesser on some of these rain totals. You can see the southern coast getting one to two, one to one and a half inches, and then the central and northern coast getting one and a half to two and a half inches. Lowlands getting about three quarters of an inch to an inch, except from Everett northward, where you're getting one to one and a half inches, and then most of the Cascades getting one and a half to three inches of rain. So overall, just really, really nice rainfall. Most of, if not more of August's entire rainfall totals on average for the month will fall in these next couple of days and will likely be significantly above average going into the rest of August. Something else I want to point out is that this is a frontal system. This is kind of like a fall system coming in in the summer. So we are going to have some breezy conditions across parts of the area. Look at the NAM model here showing winds gusting 35 to 40 miles per hour across the Washington coast. You can see 41 there near La Push, maybe near 50 miles per hour for some areas just offshore there. And then the Seattle metro area and most of the lowlands gusting up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. And then areas from Mount, Mount Vernon and then Whidbey Island and parts of Port Townsend, those areas gusting 30 to 40 miles per hour there. You can see 37 in Bellingham, 38 on Orcas Island. And about that same at Whidbey Naval Air Station. Comparing this to the high resolution rapid refresh model, you can see similar things with winds gusting 30 to 35 miles per hour for the lowlands and then 35 to 40 miles per hour from Everett northward. Those 40 mile per hour gusts will likely be a very 
close to the water, but still just very interesting to see that happening in the summer. And then we also have gusts on the coast of 35 to 40 miles per hour. So again, if you are in some of those areas that are a little bit more exposed to winds, be careful because the trees are obviously fully loaded right now with all their leaves and branches and everything. So this will be a pretty significant blow for the summer. And we'll continue to watch this over the next couple of days here as well. So yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe here to Western Washington Weather on YouTube. We're gaining a lot of subscribers on the channel here, so that's really good to see. And be sure to follow me on Blue Sky on Twitter and the Western Washington Weather Facebook group, which is today celebrating its one-year anniversary. So be sure to go join the group if you can. That's a really good place to get some longer-form updates and engage with fellow community members across Western Washington about what they're seeing with the weather. And also, I will be doing a Atmospheric River Forecast live stream this evening, so stay tuned to my social media for more info on that, and be sure to tune in here on the channel and get the latest forecast, ask some questions, and uh, I'll just keep going through some new forecast model runs and different parameters with this storm as we go through this evening. So be sure to stay tuned for the information for the live stream tonight. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will talk to you all later today.